About two months ago, I shared a video introducing the A750 from Intel, sharing its performance on some common algorithms. Since then, we have seen the driver updated along with some improvements in the mining software. So I thought to revisit the card, spending a bit more time with it, specifically as it relates to overclocking. In this video, we'll be using Intel's driver 31.0101.4335, released on April 21st of this year. I'll also be using SRB Miner version 2.2.8. While I do think a lot of attention is being given to more core intensive algorithms, I will include a few legacy projects into the conversation. The card I'm testing is in a workstation, so I'm going to use the entire workstation's power draw to determine my efficiency. As always, your experience may vary, but I think this is a good review on how the card scales. Let's establish our bookends to the card's performance by first looking at the card performance once set to the default setting which zero out any overclocks and sets the power limit to 180 watts. I suppose we could refer to this as the out-of-the-box performance. Like last time, we can be impressed by the performance, however the card's efficiency is simply not good. Next, let's establish performance at the lowest power setting of 90 watts. The quick takeaway is that we give up performance when we choose to reduce our power draw. So let's start to look at some settings in between. The following chart shares additional power settings of 120, 140, and 160 watts. Notice that there is an increase in performance with the increase in power draw, with two exceptions, and that is Dynex and Ergo or their best efficiency is at the lower wattage. Let's single out a lithium. Notice that the percentage change in power draw and how it correlates to the change in productivity. It does scale up and we see this in many of the algorithms with a couple of exceptions and that's again Dynex and Ergo. They don't really respond to more power so it's best to put them to the lowest power limit. Let's also note that 120 watts appears to be the sweet spot, which provides the greatest gains for the investment in more power. And it's good to acknowledge that not once did the miner crash during the evaluation of different power limits. So the next rational question is, what happens when voltage and frequencies are adjusted by sliding the GPU performance boost? For this question, I'm going to single out one project, in this case, Radiant, because it's the bottom of the list. Based on what we've learned previously, I'm going to set the power limit to 120 and keep it there for this entire evaluation. This chart shares the results with the performance boost set to 20, 40, 60, and 80. At a boost of 20, we gain a 5% bump in hash rate, which is good since no additional power is drawn. At a boost of 40, we gain an additional 3% at no additional power. We might as well take the gain. At 60, another 4%, and at a performance boost of 80, the A750 gains an additional 2% or an overall increase of 15%, putting us at 497 mega hashes at the same 240 watts. When setting power boost to 80, I did experience the miner crashing, most often when closing the program. So I have chosen to use the overclock setting of 60 for the power boost, with the power limit set to 120. Here's the chart of algorithms filled in at those settings. As of most recently, the A750 has been discounted down to $200, which is an, an aggressive move against their competition, who recently released new cards. 
While we are not able to run as efficiently as NVIDIA and AMD cards, the price point for the card is very attractive. While I'm not certain further driver development, along with additional adoption by the mining software developers, will only introduce us to more benefits. Could the A750 become the go-to card for budget rigs? We'll have to wait and find out. To recap, as we can see, overclocking the A750 from Intel can deliver some improved performance, especially on core intensive algorithms. If you're looking to place the card simply on the most efficient project, I think that puts you on Dynex. And if you're just looking to spec mine, damn the efficiency, then you have some viable options. I find it interesting when looking at what this card compares to from NVIDIA and AMD. At $200, the A750 provides a lot of value for both miners and gamers. Have you picked one up? If so, what are you using the card for? Share it in the comments below. That will do it for this video. If it was of help, please hit the like button. And if you have not already, consider subscribing to the channel. Each one of you helps the channel grow, and I do greatly appreciate it. As always, be mindful of your uptime, and thanks for watching.